my name is Bob Scott. I work with NIMS and Associates. Today on our Acumatica snapshot, we are going to be showing you fixed assets from Acumatica. Our agenda for today is to show you how you can create fixed assets in Acumatica, two different ways actually, and then processing fixed assets transactions, including depreciation, disposals, asset additions, and asset splits. Creating an asset in Acumatica. To create an asset in Acumatica's fixed assets, there's two methods. The first method is that you can navigate into the fixed asset system and create a fixed asset straight off in here. We've got auto numbering turned on, so Acumatica is going to auto number our, our assets. This asset can belong to a parent asset or a group of assets if you'd like. But by assigning the asset class, these are asset classes are defined by you, by the users, and default lots of information within the asset to make it easier to add. The asset class has defaulted the property, asset type, and other information. I'm going to record this receipt as of January 1st so that we can show a full year of depreciation. As far as asset cost, we'll have $200,000 in assets. We're going to assign this item to the consulting department. That is a required field as indicated by the red asterisk. Other information can be added to the asset, including what physical building it's in, if there's a floor or a space that you want to designate, perhaps a room or a custodian. Custodian opens up to the list of employees in the system. You can default general ledger accounts that are going to be used for various fixed asset transactions. This also came in from the asset class as well. The balance is where we can change the depreciation method for each of the books that we're allowing. Notice that we have three different books for depreciation. So Acumatica's fixed asset system allows you to have unlimited books. One of the books is going to be designated as a posting book, meaning that it's going to update to the general ledger. Each book can have a different depreciation method. Straight line is the most commonly used. However, some of the year's digits and other accelerated depreciation methods can also be used. If this asset is a parent asset, the children's assets are going to show up here. This is a good feature for grouping assets. Other asset information, how this asset got brought into the system. If it was brought in on a PO, the PO number from Acumatica would automatically appear. If it was brought in on an AP bill, the bill number would automatically bill. By the way, assets can be created from the PO system or from the AP invoice system. The way that the system knows to create an asset is to charge one of the fixed asset control accounts. If the fixed asset control account is charged, then Acumatica already knows that it needs to create an asset from that AP bill. On the depreciation tab, you can see what the calculated depreciation is going to be for an asset. Now, we haven't told the system to go ahead and calculate depreciation yet. They'll come in a moment. Various transactions that have been posted against this fixed asset will show up. Now, when you're adding an asset to Acumatica's fixed asset system, it creates a transaction, and that's called a purchasing transaction. Purchasing transactions ultimately need to be reconciled against similar transactions that might have been recorded in Acumatica proper, let's say through a via a journal entry. So the value of the fixed asset is reconciled against the journal entry that might have been posted to the same fixed asset clearing account. Once the asset has been saved, you can calculate depreciation. And Acumatica will calculate a projection of depreciation going out into the future. The second way to create a fixed asset is either through the AP bill system or through the purchase order system. In AP bills, you can start the process by creating a bill to a vendor. 
in charging an existing fixed asset or fixed asset clearing account. Notice on the account number, I'm putting in the fixed asset account. I'm going to remove it from hold and release it. Releasing it is enough to tell the system, the fixed asset system, that there's a new asset to be created. Back in the fixed asset system, there's an option for converting purchases to fixed assets. The converting purchases to fixed assets process is easy and quick. You select which account is containing the transaction from accounts payable or the general ledger that initially started the fixed asset creation. I select the transaction that I'd like to clear against this fixed asset. Since I have the system auto numbering, I don't need to assign it an asset number, but I do need to select an asset class. The department is a mandatory field. Once that's entered, you click on process. I can update my fixed asset transactions. And the asset is created in the system. Oftentimes, after the asset has been created from accounts payable, you still would want to come in and make simple adjustments to the system. But you can see that the acquisition costs, GL accounts, all of that was set from the accounts payable system with the aid of the fixed assets system as well. We calculate depreciation on this asset. We can see what the monthly depreciation schedule is going to look like. Fixed asset status and life cycle. Fixed assets contain a status, and the status determines whether an asset can accept transactions or not. But the statuses are hold active, could be fully depreciated. We could have disposed of it, we could have suspended it, which means no more depreciation, or we could reverse it, meaning that the asset was originally recorded, but now we're sort of unrecording it. Additionally, transactions can be recorded against a fixed asset. You can split transactions. So if a transaction has more than one unit, you can split it off and create a new asset from the split value of the original asset. You can transfer assets between locations. You can reverse disposal and you can dispose of an asset. Fixed assets in Acumatica and all systems have a life cycle. The life cycle highlighted in Acumatica is that the asset is either purchased through AP or purchase order. That purchase from AP or purchase order is converted into a fixed asset. Over the life of the asset, additions or deductions can be made to the value of the asset. Acumatica makes it easy to add value or reduce value on an asset. Managing fixed assets means that you can change custodians, you can change the location of the asset. You can perform periodic physical counts of assets, and obviously you can depreciate assets throughout the life of the product. At the end of the asset life, you can dispose of it. When you dispose of the asset, you tell the system how you disposed of it. Was it a donation? Was it a sale? And the system will record proper journal entries to record the disposal of the assets, given its state and the amount of depreciation that has been accumulated. Asset additions and splits. In the Acumatica fixed asset system, additions and subtractions to the value of an asset is easily done through fixed asset transactions. By clicking on fixed asset transactions, a user can easily determine that they would like to add value or subtract value from an asset. In essence, I select the asset that I'd like to add value to, what book I'm going to be adding the value to. I'm choosing the posting book. This is going to go to the general ledger. Then I choose the nature of the transaction that I'm doing. Purchasing means when I add it as a positive number that I'm adding value to the system. 
If I were to add take away value from the system, I would use a negative number. And that's it. That has created the fixed asset addition. Splits are when you take an asset and you divide it into new assets. So assets, when they're added, can have quantities associated with them. Let's think of bar stools. You buy four bar stools, you want to split those into four separate assets, you would use the split asset function. In this case, I grab an asset. The asset was originally entered with a quantity one, but it allows me to split it. This is a $28,000. I want to take and split off $12,000. And it's just created a second asset from the original asset. And the asset will be clearly marked and indicated that it's been split. Running depreciation. Periodically, depreciation needs to be run in any fixed asset system. Acumatica makes it very easy to run. There's two ways that depreciation can be run. One is that you can navigate to a particular asset. And you can just tell the system to calculate depreciation. When you calculate depreciation from here, what you're really doing is updating the depreciation schedule, the estimated the schedule. Calculating depreciation from here does not update and finalize actual depreciation. To update actual depreciation, you can go to the calculate depreciation option under processes. When you go into the calculated depreciation, it gives you a list of all the assets that the system feels need to have depreciation calculated. You can see that each asset is listed three times. And that's because we have three different books associated with each asset. Book two and book three are not posting to the general ledger. The posting book is going to be posting to the general ledger. I'm gonna select everything. The first time I ran depreciation, I did calculate only. And that updates all the schedules for all the assets. In this case, if I want to depreciate for real and permanently, I can click on depreciate and process all. We calculate depreciation in the depreciation action mode has created a fixed asset transaction. These fixed asset transactions are in a balanced state and ready to be updated to the general ledger. To conveniently and easily update all those fixed asset transactions to the general ledger, I can choose release fixed asset transactions and tell it to release all. The general ledger is now being updated to reflect depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. The assets are now updated to reflect that permanent depreciation has been performed. There are ways, like in most areas of Acumatica, to reverse transactions as well. Depreciation can be reversed as well. Disposing of fixed assets. Disposing an asset in Acumatica is quick and easy. Select the Dispose Assets menu option processes. Choose the disposal method. Say what the proceeds of the disposal is going to be. Then choose the asset that is going to be disposed of. Preparing the disposal transaction will load a small report that shows you the effects of the disposal. This is the actual financial impact of the disposal transaction. Once that transaction is ready, release it and the general ledger is updated and the status of the asset has been changed to disposed. Thank you for attending our fixed asset snapshot. If you like the, what you've seen, like, share, and subscribe. If you have any further questions about Acumatica or Acumatica fixed assets, 
contact us at erp at nimsassociates.com. Thank you.